Hi, I'm Charlie Roy, and I'm an implementation consultant for Echo Consulting. Echo Consulting is a women-owned project management solutions company. We work with organizations uh, of all sizes, and we're also a Smartsheet-aligned partner. Uh, today, I'm going to be showing you how to build metrics and charts from multi-select columns in Smartsheet. Uh, the example we have here um, can give you a high-level view of project participation by department, uh, which could be useful in exercises like workforce and capacity planning. So this is a dashboard. Here's some metrics and a chart. I'm going to be showing you how to build these today. Um, but first, we're going to head right back to a sheet in Smartsheet. I'm going to show you what a multi-select column looks like. So this is a project intake sheet, just a sample that I have here. And this column, Departments with Stakeholders, is an example of a multi-select column. And so what a multi-select column is, is as you know, in Smartsheet, we have a whole variety of column types. This is a drop-down list column where you've selected to allow multiple values per cell. Now you can enter um, the values that you would want to appear in your multi-select column down here. We're gonna leave that be. So, you can either enter these right in the sheet by selecting multiple options like so, okay. or if your projects are coming in through an intake form, multi-select column allows you to have a field like this, where the submitter can come in, select multiple um, options here, submit their form, and it would populate like this in this intake form. So in order to build our um, metrics and charts, we're going to use um, what we like to call a metrics sheet. So this is a separate sheet um, where we can type in some formulas and gather information from various columns in this sheet. And we can organize the data in a way that works well to build these metrics and charts. So we're going to go, I've already built out a metric sheet here. As you can see, I've put in some um, headers for the table for these columns and rows. And I'm going to show you how to write the formula to collect information from that multi-select column. So in this cell here, what I want to show is I want to show the number of projects where the department stakeholders column contains HR. And this over here, this is the status of the project. So we want the number of not started projects, the number of in progress projects, number of complete projects, and the total. So let's just dive right into the formula. When we're typing formulas, we always start with an equal sign, and we're going to use a count ifs formula to get started. So it prompts us, we're going to select our range, and we'll reference another sheet in order to do so. As you can see, it's pulling me right to that intake sheet that I had. And I'm going to scroll over to that multi-select column, Departments with Stakeholders. I'm going to select that and insert reference. So now I'll set my criteria. Now for multi-select columns, um, you have to use this has function. You may be familiar with the contains function but that one does not work for multi-selects. You have to use has. Now our search range is just going to be each individual cell in that column that we originally set. So we'll type at cell there. And the criteria is just going to be HR. We'll set that as so. All right. Now we also want to um, set uh, some criteria for the project status. So we're going to select another range, same intake sheet. We're going to go over to our project status column, insert reference. Now this time I don't need to use the has function because it's not a multi select. The project status column is not a multi select column. So I'll just select not started here. It's always good practice. Um, I don't want to have to type out this formula a whole bunch of times. I want to be able to drag it across this table and populate all of these cells. So I'm going to add a couple of absolute references. That's denoted with the dollar sign. So I'm making 
Um, this reference, the blue one here, making it so it's always in row number one. And then I'm going to add another reference over here. There we go. And it makes it so that this uh, magenta reference is always in column, uh, or the primary column here. So we'll hit enter. Now I can take this cell, drag it across, and down my table. All right. Now you can see that I have some numbers populated there. So we're also going to get our totals. Now this is going to be for the metrics. Um, for the metrics on the dashboard. So we're going to use the equal sign again. This time we can just highlight these three cells to get our sum. I just got to add the sum function. There we go. And three. Again, I can drag that right across. Excellent. Now we have our metric sheet. We're going to go back to our dashboard and show you how to build these out. Cool. So this had already been pre-populated. So I am just going to pop in and edit this. And we're going to delete them so I can build them up with you. I'll just delete one of these metrics here. So let's start with the metric. We're going to click on this plus button to add a widget. Our metric is going to be a metric widget, so we'll select there. We're going to start by adding data. So we're going to go right to that metric sheet that we just built. Combine this right here. i got to move my video screen a little ways. It's just loading. And I think the metric that I deleted there was for marketing. So we're just going to highlight this cell, the total for marketing. And we have our number two there. If I do need to delete this, I'll add a title of marketing. And I'll just do a little bit of formatting here. I did center this. That looks nice. And I'm going to select stacked for my number two and go with a 24 font. Drag this down. Perfect. So now our metric is built. We can save that. We'll go in and we will build our chart. That nice bar graph that we had earlier. I'm going to select add data. We're going to head right back to that metrics sheet again. Just loading. So now we're going to select that entire table. So that includes the titles for the columns and rows. And select OK. Now Smartsheet tends to default to a column um, chart type. So we are going to change that to a stacked bar. All right. So as you notice, this is looking a little bit different than what we had before. Um, we have all of our departments here and our status is here. So I'm going to select, select switch rows and columns in order to get those in the right spot. Now, often when you make changes like this, Smartsheet is going to default back to a standard bar or standard column chart. We're going to get that back to the stacked bar. There we go. And we can just do a little bit of editing. We'll come down to the series function. One will show the value label, makes it a little bit easier to read the chart. And we can go into each um, of these elements in the legend. So you can either go to this drop down here, or you can actually click on the chart and it'll bring it up. We're just going to change some colors. There we go. We'll do in progress next. We can do light orange and complete. We'll go a little light green like that. Okay. Excellent. And now we have that chart that we showed at the get go. 
So if you have any more um, questions or need any help with your Smartsheet uh, implementation, please reach out to Echo Consulting. Uh, thanks for watching.